Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and welcome to part two of my weird and strange but useful percussion instruments. So today we're going to be doing whistles and bells, or bells and whistles. Uh, over my career, I've accumulated lots and lots and lots of whistles and bells and, well, you, as you'll see in the following videos, all kinds of crap. So I've divided the whistles up uh, into several sections. Uh, I have boat and train whistles, slide whistles, siren whistles, police whistles, wind whistles, and animal whistles. And these are all whistles that I've used, uh, you know, throughout my career. I have lots more that I haven't used. <laughs> and I don't know why I have those, but I do. So uh, just a little disclaimer here. I've had really bad chronic asthma since I was a little kid. So if I pass out, call 911 or call my wife and she can... Give me a few kicks to the head and, and, and revive me. All right, so we'll start with the, um, the biggest whistle here. This is called a boat whistle. And I've used this several times on um, shows. We, I did the show, unfortunately, I did the show Titanic, the Broadway show, which was a real dog. <laughs> but I had to use this boat whistle, and uh, so I got it for that. And this is a really good one. It's an old one. It's probably got lead paint on it. I hope not, but... It might. So here's what this sounds like. So that's an old boat whistle. And it can also double as a train whistle, a, a big train whistle. But normally train whistles are a little higher. So I have two of those here. This is a large, not the largest, but a large train whistle. And this is the smaller train whistle. My kids used to love this with the uh, Thomas the Tank Engine. I think that's what it's called. I used to blow this all the time around the house. So those are three types of boat slash train whistles. And you'll definitely need one of those if you're going to play shows or with an orchestra. Uh, they're very common. Uh, pop shows, kids shows. Broadway shows, uh, even if you want to do any kind of Foley work for a film, it's important. Okay, next we have slide whistles. I have lots and lots of these. Pretty much the best all-around one is this Acme. And by the way, Acme um, is or, or was the, the best maker of game calls in the world. Uh, they used to make them all out of metal, as you'll see here. Most of them now are made of plastic, obviously, because it's cheaper. But these are pretty good. So this is a good all-round slide whistle. I call it the black medium slide whistle. So here's what this sounds like. So if you have more air than me, you could probably make that a lot louder. But uh, it's, it's a descending or ascending pitch. You can even try to play some melodies. Better stop before I run out of air. Okay, so that's a good one. That's a good all-around one. The next one I'd recommend if you can get your hands on one, this is a metal song whistle. These are more expensive. Uh, this is the kind of thing that you can actually play tunes on. Out of air. All right, so uh, this one I've had a really long time. And it's a really good quality whistle, very smooth. Sometimes I put some valve oil in there to keep it moving. Uh, that is important for a lot of these whistles that have moving parts. You do need to keep them oiled. And you see I have some tape there. That, that's so I don't, if I have to grab it really fast, I don't put my finger in here. I'll just grab the tape and, and I change that out quite often. Now, this some slide whistles you need to be able to keep in your mouth. So you're playing stuff with your hands and then you got to use that. That's very uncomfortable. This is not one of those unless you want to lose your front teeth because it's too heavy. Uh, this is also not one of those because it, it has uh, a mouthpiece that will not lend itself to that. So just slips right out. Okay. But this is one of those you could use. That's a toy whistle. All right. So... This one is 
on its last legs. I don't even think it's going to work anymore. <whistles> yeah, probably not. I need to oil this one up, so we'll retire that for now. The toy whistles, generally, they're toys, so they're not going to last as long. Uh, what else can I show you? This one is one you can also do that with, so... This is a really nice whistle. I found this in an antique shop. This is a brass uh, slide whistle. It's amazing. It's probably from the 20s, I would think. It's super old. has only one plastic part on there. I don't even know if it's plastic. They used to call this stuff Bakelite in the old days. It's what they made radios out of. And it's in pretty good shape. I don't know if you can see that. Close up on it. And you can, this is a, a, a mouth whistle. You can hold it with your mouth. And play it like that without destroying your teeth. Okay, uh, now I also have some really tiny soprano slide whistles. Here's one. So if you're looking to annoy dogs, you can use that. And here's another wood one that's a little warmer. But your mileage may vary on, on that one because it doesn't make a lot of sound. So this is something you'd use um, in the studio on a close mic, okay? So those are the slide whistles. The last kind of slide whistle, actually, before I leave these, is this toy whistle. That's pretty cool. It's a vibrating whistle. So you get kind of an alien sound out of it. So as you blow into it, it vibrates. It's got this little, I don't know if you can see that. It's a little vibrating thing. You can find a lot of cool stuff in toy stores. Uh, I always used to go into those just to find whistles and, uh, and all kinds of different sounds. So, all right, so that's another toy whistle. So those are slide whistles, all right? Now you have your animal calls, which are important. And the most common ones are the duck call, the cuckoo, and the crow call. Those are all, all the whistles that I've used with the orchestra. There's many more. I mean, uh, Acme has um, a whole list of them. On, on, you can go online and take a look. Hunters use them. You know, if, I wouldn't play these outside North Carolina. You might get shot. All right. But uh, they use these for hunting. Okay. So this is a duck call. <coughs> Okay, it's funny. That's um, used with orchestras quite often in kiddie shows. Then you have your cuckoo. So you're, you're putting your finger on this hole to change the pitch and the air. So that's a cuckoo whistle. Then you have your crow call. I haven't, I've used this a few times. I think this is the least realistic whistle, or I'm probably playing it wrong. Super annoying. Okay. And then my favorite, you have your nightingale. We'll see if this works. It's a very tricky whistle. You have to fill it in water, and it's got this little air release valve that you have to kind of move a little. So let's see. All right, and you just got to get the water ratio just right, because if you don't, uh, nothing will come out but this high-pitched kind of, um, you know, marine whistle, okay? So that's a tricky one, and I've used this lot in Broadway shows and, and with the orchestra. Then you have some wind whistles. These are great, and this is an effect that you can get with any kind of valve instrument with the mouthpiece, so horn players or... Trumpet players will do it, but you can do this with a whistle. This is a metal one. I think it was made by LP back in the day. So that's a good sounding one. That sounds great in the studio with a bunch of reverb and close to the mic. This is a plastic version of it. Um, it's like a sound effects cheap, cheap thing. So not as big a range and not as high. So as you can probably determine from this, the metal whistles sound better in general, if you can find them. They have more projection, bigger sound.
and they last longer. I don't know if you want to call this next thing a whistle, but it's it's what you heard on the Olympics for the soccer things, the tennis things. Um, I had to use this for an orchestra concert a few years back. We were doing some kid show, and so I went out and bought one, and for a couple bucks, it's so annoying, and I wish it would just go away, but I'm keeping it because I might need it again. All right, so those are the... Um, Game whistles, the wind whistle, and the annoying whistle. So, next we have police whistles. These are really important. Uh, they're used a lot in shows, most notably West Side Story. You need one of these um, for a piece called Rumble. And you have to keep it in your mouth when you play it. So that's important. you got to practice that. A lot of times you put it in your mouth and you blow really hard. It'll blow right out of your mouth. And the conductor will give you the look of death because you missed your whistle. Q, okay? Get two sizes. There's a large whistle, which is lower, and there's a smaller one, which is higher. Uh, you'll need them, all right? So here's the high one. And here's the low one. So you can actually ask the conductor which one they want. I usually don't talk to conductors uh, unless they ask me something as a general rule. So I would suggest you do the same thing. But try one, and then if they look at you funny, try the other one, and then they might smile or give you the thumbs up. Okay, so always have a second choice. So these whistles should be put on lanyards, and that's another thing we should talk about. That's a lanyard. If you do clinics for companies, they'll give you a bunch of these so you can put your, your name tag on them. I have lots of them from over the years. Um, and then just put the whistle on there. Put it on your neck so it's handy, so you're not fishing around for it in the dark, okay? And make sure you can keep that in your mouth when you're done with it. Spit it out, stays on your neck, no problem. And that goes for lots of other whistles. The next ones being most notable. So these are the siren whistles. I have four of these here, okay? I have three big ones with the horn and a regular portable one that I can wear around my neck a little bit easier. These whistles are used all the time. Uh, pretty much every show I do, every Broadway show, not all of them, but a lot of them use a siren whistle. And it's a scary whistle because it doesn't always speak. And that's why I have so many of them. I always have two or three backups because a lot of times you'll go to blow into it and it'll be dead. If you open it up, and I'll do that now for you, if you can see, I'll try to do a close up here. There's a little propeller thing that goes inside this and it turns. It's a propeller without any fins. And when you blow on it, what happens is it activates that and it spins. Now sometimes, probably some moisture gets in there, some condensation, it decides not to work. So, you can try, you know, lubricating it with silicone or uh, don't use WD-40 on this because you're putting it in your mouth. There's some kinds of silicone that are safe. The kinds for cooking, I'd recommend that. I use WD-40 for metal parts that I'm not breathing in. You don't want to, it's a petroleum product, product so you don't want to breathe it in, okay? So before I play a siren whistle, I'll blow a little on it. See, it's dead now. That's exactly what happens. That's awesome that I was able to create that for you. All right? So I'll blow on it really quietly if I have time. You don't always have time to do that. I'll warm it up to make sure it's working. If I blow lightly into it and it's not working, I'll grab another one. Okay? Because you don't... Those are always inevitably big solos, obviously. Someone's crashing on stage, juggling something. It's a comic moment, so you don't want to miss it, or you will get the stare of death from the conductor, okay? So, I have three kinds. These all sound different, though. The kinds I recommend are the Acme All Metal. If you can find them, they are expensive, all right? But I do think they still make them. I, I need to check, or you can check. There's also a plastic one with a plastic mouthpiece. That's probably what they're making now because it's cheaper, um, and that doesn't sound as good. So here's what this sounds like.
you got to put a lot of air into those. Those make me dizzy. Now, here's a metal one. So that's a huge difference in the old metal ones. They also last longer. All the parts are better. And here's my backup. This one's my oldest one. Sometimes this one doesn't work. Now you can hear the grit in there. That's because it's worn out. Okay? And it doesn't last as long. In other words, it doesn't spin as long. So that that's my oldest one. This one's probably at least 35 years old when I started playing a lot of professional show show gigs. Uh, what you can do is you can change out parts if you want. It's possible if you find a part for it like this on eBay. You can actually buy this and then connect it to the horn. All right. So that's all possible. Let's see if we can get this thing to work. I'm curious. So sometimes you can open it, blow on it, close it up again. I did it. But you see the fear factor there where you just don't know. So always have an extra one of these. Finally, uh, we have our Brazilian whistles, our samba whistles. These can substitute for a lot of kinds of whistles. If it just says whistle, I'll either use a police whistle or a Brazilian whistle. So these are the kinds you buy from LP, which I don't like. So. All right, they're weak. They don't, the, the, the old ones were metal. I do have one, but I couldn't find it. So I'll have to look for it um, harder. But um, the new ones are plastic. They're terrible. So find an old one. My favorites are these wood ones. These are great. I own several of these and they sound really good. They're handmade and you can use two fingers on them for changing the pitch. <laughs> And I have another size, so you can hear that. All right, don't have a lot of air left today, sorry. Uh, this one's not as good. But you can buy these online, you can find them, and they're pretty cheap, and they're, like I said, they're handmade in Brazil. All right, so those are good to have, at least one of them, and the wood whistles are better, I think. Finally, we talked about bells and whistles, so we'll show you some bells before we, we end the video and then go on to our next one. So it's good to have several kinds of bells. I literally have probably 50 kinds of bells, bell plates, all kinds of, all kinds of bells, all right? These are ones that I use quite often. So these are kind of hotel bells, the old style hotel bell. All right, don't expect anyone to come running. And these are kind of uh, old cowbell bells. These are really nice. Sometimes I have a bunch of these on, on some string, and um, I use those. The show Wicked actually uses those. Uh, there's a sequence with a, a goat slash human character, uh, and then those, those bells are used as a sort of signature for him. Those look like this, by the way. They're called goat bells. And I have a whole bunch of these, like in a, on a big string. These, I just cut these off for you today, okay? Here's another hotel bell. All right, and then here's a smaller, two sizes of these. So these are just kind of, I call them cowbells, is probably a name for them, but it's good to have several sizes. All right. And then finally, we have a ship's bell or a trolley bell. This is used a lot. All right. I just used it on one of the movies we did. I think it was one of the Harry Potter movies. I'm almost sure it was. Uh, maybe Harry Potter 3. Anyway, so. Uh, all right. So that's 
That's a great sounding bell. You can get these. I bought these this at an antique shop. I have a mount for it. It sits in, and then you can mount it to a piece of wood. It's pretty cool. All right, so that's the ship's bell. All right, so that'll do it for today. Let me know if you have any questions on any of this stuff. I'm happy to uh, answer it, but uh, the important things you have, once again, you need to have at least two good slide whistles, maybe a duck call, one of these for an animal whistle, all right? One train whistle or a boat whistle, uh, and one or two good slide whistles, uh, and maybe a samba whistle and a bell. <laughs> that should get you through uh, most gigs. Thanks very much. We'll see you soon.